Welcome back to reInvent 2021. You're watching theCUBE, my name is Dave Vellante. We're really excited to have Anthony Lai here. He's the Executive Vice President and General Manager of Public Cloud at NetApp, and John C. Stephenson is the CTO and VP of Cloud at NetApp. Guys, good to see you. Same Likewise. to you, it's great yeah. to be back. You know, Anthony, well, so we saw each other uh, virtually at the AWS Storage Day, the big announcement, we're going to talk about that, but I go back and I said this to you several years ago, we were sitting, you know, some after party, and you said, we are going to transform NetApp, we are going all in on cloud. We've seen NetApp transform many, many times. This is probably the biggest in history. No, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, I think, you know, I, I can't believe it, but you know, it'll be five years for me in February. And uh, in those five years, I think we, we really have done things that nobody expected. And uh, I think we've proven to, to our existing customers, to our competitors, and now with Amazon to a whole new set of customers that, that our intellectual property that we build and the acquisitions that we've done have, have made a lot of sense. I think we've demonstrated this, uh, this wonderful concept of symmetry. Customers now understand and believe that that a dollar invested in NetApp, wherever it is, on premise or in the cloud, is a dollar that moves wherever they want it to move and progresses as their own businesses progress. So John C, for the, the latest announcement that you guys made to integrate ONTAP into the AWS cloud, you had to do some deeper integration, right? It wasn't just wrap your stack in Kubernetes and shove it into the cloud. Can you talk about what you had to do, what the collaboration was like? The collaboration with AWS has been fantastic. It, it literally took two and a half years. You know, from the, the, the point where we decided to uh, agree on the design principles, how we were actually going to deliver this as a service, the integration into every single aspect of AWS. You know, whether it's uh, the console, the FXX API, the uh, integrations to all the additional services, that uh, AWS has, like RDS, like Aurora, like uh, SageMaker, like EKS and ECS. And I mean, we're just getting started with uh, the uh, integration points and the collaboration and the teamwork. I would call it teamwork more than a collaboration. The teamwork with all these teams, and maybe especially at name, who, 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 who was the leader of the storage sort of uh, unit in, in, uh, in uh, AWS, has been fantastic. Yeah, well, so this is the 10th reInvent, this is the ninth year we've been here. We're seeing a dramatically different cloud than 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And a different storage business. I'm not even sure you're, I mean, I don't know, that's, I don't even think about it as the old storage business anymore. Essentially, you're building a cloud on top of clouds, and a super cloud, if yeah, you will. I mean, I think, look, the strategy was, as I said, very, very simple to us, which was, you know, Fundamentally, companies you know, run their applications on the basic primitives of compute, storage, and networking. And the gold standard for file was always on tap. And, and I think what we, what we did, which I think was unique, was we, we didn't just, as you said, throw it onto a cloud, stick it in a virtual machine, and say to the customer, there, it's on tap, just as you remember it. We, we reimagined it and we, we architected it to be a cloud service. So it's elastic, it goes up and down. You can change the performance at runtime. And what we really did with Amazon was, was we wanted to make it a fully managed service. We, we didn't want people to think about versioning and patching. We wanted to remove all of that and we wanted people to take as much or as little as they needed. And we, and Amazon, we, we chose that that we should own the responsibility for the availability of the service and we should, we should maintain the, the, the service ourselves so that customers of ONTAP can benefit from the solution, but in many ways customers who've never been ONTAP customers can now take advantage of, of, a, of an enterprise grade file system and all the great things that it does without having to understand how it works. And explain why that's important for customers because people think, oh wow, you got S3 but it's very simple, get, put, right? You don't have the full stack of a mature on tap. Maybe explain what that means to customers a little bit. You know, file systems are very important things. You know, we basically use them in, in, in our work environments every single day, you know. Within your sort of, you know, your MacBook, you have a home directory and subdirectories, and files ele very elegantly lay out applications and lay out infrastructures 
in ways that, that object repositories cannot. You know, the other, aside from block and file, sorry, from file and object, you of course have block storage. And so file, file plays a very important role. IDC has file growing at almost twice the pace of object now on the public cloud systems. And you know, file has about 13% of the overall storage market. And it's growing, and, and I don't see any reason why file won't be as big on the Amazon cloud as, as the S3 has been. So you guys, well, go ahead, please. Yeah, I mean, you also have to take into account that of the S3 object storage uh, offerings of AWS is an integrated part in yeah. our solution. So, so, so that's how there's we are actually doing point. automatic tiering. Yeah. So you actually reap the best of both worlds where you get the, the, the cost management of putting it in object storage, but you get the performance and the data management capabilities that is pretty unprecedented. You know, we are the first storage offering that can actually do cross-region replication seamlessly by retaining deduplication and compression. But we also play a lot with uh, you know, block and, and uh, object storage. So when Anthony was talking about how we've actually delivered this as a service, and this is uh, sort of from our design principles, are we are basically delivering this as a software as a service, because, more than an infrastructure as a service, because the stack that we are actually deploying, or the, on, or, or the secret source of ONTAP, it's a very vast software stack that we are delivering, on top of AWS infrastructure. So I would always call it, or categorize it, a little bit more than software as a service, rather than infrastructure as a service. But it's it's even more than that, if I'm right, because it's cloud pricing. Yes. Right. So it's not, you're not, pre, I mean, when I buy Salesforce, I got to sign up for a three-year deal. I, that's not a consumption-based model. Yeah. No, I think, I think Amazon, you know, what Amazon did uniquely and brilliantly was it retailed technology. And it's, it's what makes Amazon so good is that they choose to sort of simplify things and, and when they find benefits as a retailer, they pass them on to the customer. And, and you know, this, this sort of pay-as-you-go business model is, is really good for the customer. It, it, it makes us work harder. Because you, know, you have to retain your customer sort of every 10 minutes. And that's something that, you know, as you said, with enterprise software and even some of the early SaaS vendors, that's not how it works. And so Amazon has forced us all to, to be very, very attentive to our customers. And I'd love to talk about what that means for the on-prem business, but, but if we have time, but you guys won Design Partner of the Year. Yep. What's that all about? First of all, congratulations. Thank you. There's a lot of ISV design partners. You guys came out number one, so congratulations on that. What's that all about? Explain what that entailed and how you got that. Yeah, I'll say a few words maybe Yonsi can add. I mean, the first thing, of course, is, you know, ISV stands for Independent Software Vendor. So, you know, it's always great because most people would say, well, NetApp is on-premise storage hardware. Of course, yeah. Which, which really, we've, we've not really ever been, and increasingly we're demonstrating that we are a software company and we operate at cloud speed. You know, I, 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 I can't really take the credit. I would give it to Yonsei and the engineering team. Maybe Yonsei, you can explain, you know, what more about the award and, and yeah. why I think we were selected. So, I mean, I, I think it says a lot that this is the first time AWS has ever allowed a third party company to be this integrated into their console, into their uh, supportability systems. You know, you know uh, we, 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 we make fun of this, me and Anthony, all the time. Because when we started this, down this path, everybody at NetApp said, guys, you're wasting your time. This is why they have, why AWS has the marketplace. But we didn't want to go, we already had the marketplace. And we wanted to be able to connect to all these associated services and, and do it in the manner that, you know, this was a true collaboration of engineering teams for a long time to actually deliver this service on both sides. So the credit, of course, will always go to the engineers on, the bo on both sides. Even though I designed it, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't code it. So, so, uh, uh, I think that uh, that alone, being the first to do it in AWS ever, I think we deserve that award. So just for our audience, we can be clear, we're talking about FSX on tap, in the cloud, in yeah. the AWS cloud, we've been kind of you know, dancing around that, but so that was announced, I guess, in September. Yes, right? September 2nd. What's the uptake been like? What, uh -huh. What's the reaction? Unbelievable. 
I'll bet. No, no, no I mean... <laughs> no, I believe it. <laughs> faster than we ever dreamed of. Yeah. The number of customers, I'm sure I'm not allowed to, <laughs> to say the number of customers, but we, as, and the fact that you know, 60% of those customers have never been NetApp customers before, but they see the value in the data management capabilities that we are bringing to the market. So it exceeded expectations, and your expectations so were probably they were high. enthusiastic. They yeah. were high, yeah. I mean, Amazon is, is on the record. I, I was with Ed earlier on today, uh, recording a piece, and Ed, you know, it was very clear that it's one of the fastest growing services now on AWS. You know, it turns out that, you know, the customer base, I think, recognizes the, not just the need for a file system, but the uniqueness and capabilities that ONTAP provides you know, to, to those customers in how they manage their business and transformations. And so, you know, to, be, to be sort of behind the console, to be sort of behind the Amazon CLI and the Amazon API, you see the world very, very differently, you know, I, I, I think the Amazon Marketplace is a fantastic capability, but I'll tell you, you know, being, being a core part of, of the AWS service itself, that they sell, that they support, that they bill for, it's a nice place to be. So, SaaS company, um, so you know, you're talking the language of application development, Kubernetes, right? What do you think this means for the future of NetApp? specifically, but also generally, the on-prem storage business and the storage business in general? Well, we just announced our uh, second quarter earnings today, and uh, what's happening is our cloud business is growing like crazy. We, we uh, generated $388 million of ARR, and, uh, and the growth rates are, you know, astronomically high. That is increasingly helping our on-premise business to grow. Uh, you know, the, the nice thing about being in primarily in the storage and data business is people aren't deleting many things. And the, the rate at which they're generating information is just accelerating. So, so actually, the confidence that we give the customer by demonstrating a sort of a cloud first, a sort of a, a principles of all the cloud is actually giving customers to buy more on premise. So, so we, we really don't mind. Uh, we are, our job, much like Amazon's, is to have this customer obsession, and you can't really go wrong if you just keep asking them what they want. Yeah, if you can do so profitably, you're going to be reinvested in your business. Guys, we got to go. Love yep. to have you back. I Thank mean, you. It's been quite a transformation. You said you're going to do it. You're doing it. So we well are done. Indeed. You, five years in the making. Okay, this is Dave Vellante for the Cube, the leader in high-tech coverage. Keep it right there. We'll be right back from AWS Reinvent 21. <laughs>